Okay, I want to do a really quick uh, video on this radio I just finished up for a customer. It's a rather rare Robin SB540D 40 channel AM and sideband CB radio. Um, they made this in two different, as far as cosmetics go, two different versions. They had the silver face, you know, aluminum face, and then they had the black face. This, of course, is the silver face. Um, some of the features of this radio, of course, has the digital clock, fast and slow buttons to set it. It does not have an alarm mode. Um, most all your controls are fairly standard, volume, squelch, clarifier. Now, if you look down there, it has Claromatic. Um, I don't have the microphone with it. I think the customer does have the, the, the correct mic with it. But if you had the Claro mic, which is the microphone with the clarifier on it, you pull that control out, and then that activates the clarifier that's built into the microphone. Um, RF gain, mic gain, and your mode selection um, has SWR calibrate, your tone control, CD, and PA switch, noise blanker, and internal or external speaker. So this radio, unlike most of them, where you just, as soon as you plug in an external speaker, it disables the internal one. This one actually has a switch, so you can leave an external speaker plugged in all the time, and then you know select between the internal or external. The main unique feature of these radios was the, it has no channel selector knob, if you notice. Everything is controlled by the keypad. Um, it has five programmable memories, one through five. Um, right now I have uh, channels 12, 17, 19, 32, and 38 programmed in through it. So if you go into the memory recall, you can see, you can scroll through the channels you have programmed in. It has a... Uh, auto scan feature which scans I'll turn the squelch up here in auto scan mode it just goes through all 40 channels or you can go through your memory scan which scans the five channel you know, up to five channels you have programmed in now you notice this little decimal point here that's the scan delay so I have currently uh, the radio is hooked up and being fed a one microvolt signal on channel 19, 27.185 megahertz out out of the communications test set here. So, get it back to scanning. Okay, so there it's caught a signal. Now, with the scan delay on, if I turn the squelch up to the point where it blocks this out, notice it stays on. It stays on for a while, that's the delay. If you hit the scan delay button again, notice the decimal point went away. So now it catches the signal as soon as you as soon as it breaks squelch, it goes back to scanning. So there's no delay. So it's nice to have that feature turned on because that allows when you're listening to multiple people talking on a channel, when somebody unkeys it doesn't automatically go back to scan and you miss the beginning of the next guy's conversation. It holds it on channel just like, you know, let's say uh a CB or a, a police scanner holds on on channel, so that's kind of a unique feature of this radio you don't see in a lot of other ones. This is a good working radio. Um, like I say, it's currently hooked up. Turn the squelch back down. Let's see here. Yeah, there's some. Yeah, the trucker's bleeding in. That's just bleeding in through the cabinet. I don't even have it. The, the antenna is not even hooked up. Like I say, it's hooked up right now just to the uh, communications test set. Now, I have it currently set up running output, which goes through 20 dBs of internal attenuation in, inside this. This coax cable comes out and then goes over to the spectrum analyzer. So, it's in AM mode. So you can see there's the transmit signal. And you can see at 54 megahertz, which will be right right down here, that's all there is. So the transmit signals at what 35? Yeah, a little over. But let's just even it down to the next lowest, uh, say 35 dB, and that's at approximately negative 25 dB. So that's 60 dB suppression of your second harmonic, which is fantastic and you know, far exceeds uh, US FCC specs. And actually, that meets uh, even European specifications. So because they have, they do have better specifications for harmonics. So it's a good, clean working radio. Matter of fact, I can just get her switched over here. 
to an on air antenna that's run through over here. So let's see if we got that's uh, one of the local hot rod. And this has a fairly effective noise blanker. And it actually works really well on signals that are just barely above the static. If you have the noise blanker off, which actually, honestly, acts more as a noise limiter, um, as like an ANL. Um, but when noise blanker's off for a signal, you can barely pick up out of the static. If you turn that on, it clears them up really nice and makes them clearly legible. So that works really well on these radios. It was a you know fairly good design. The one thing I absolutely hate about these radios is doing the alignment. Now, of course, the top cover's on, so you can't see it. But there's a small, what's called, a, a lot of people call a sardine can. It has a PLL chip. It's mounted inside on a separate little circuit board that's mounted up and down to the main circuit board. And you pull the cover off to, ac to gain access to it when you're doing the alignment. The problem is that makes all of the alignment cores and the variable capacitors are facing towards the rear. It's m mounted right about here in the radio. So you only have this much room to try and get in alignment tools that are this deep. You need it can't be any longer than that. Actually, it can't even be that long because of the heat sinks that are inside this thing. So you kind of have to get creative and make your own alignment tool. A little, little mini guy to be able to get into some of the tuning coils to set your uh, offsets for upper and lower sideband. But other than actually working on them, as far as a radio goes, like I say, it's a good working radio. Um, it does... The modulation limiter is fully intact. Nothing's been disabled in this. So, like I say, it's basically a bare-bone stock radio. So, it's on AM right now. We're on the 50-watt scale. So, audio check. One, two, audio check. So, dead key, four watts, swinging to about 12 to 13. If we go to sideband... Audio check one two. Audio check one two three four. So it does about 17 watts, maybe a little bit more on uh, sideband, and it's a good sound. The transmit audio sounds really good on this. So there it is. Uh, like I say, fairly rare Robin SB540D. Another one ready to go back and put into use.